everyone, my name is Marcy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here. And in this video, I'm going to continue on my Euro concept series, which it has been forever since I put one up. But I'm going to be talking about hyperbilirubinemia, which um, obviously is going to be jaundice. You have excessive amount of bilirubin levels. And every question where someone's jaundice, you're going to get right. Why? Because of this diagram I put together that combines both UWorld material, um, online meta and, and pistanas. Mainly this diagram comes from uh, UWorld. So as always remember UWorld is where I get my concepts mainly from and that's what I try to explain to you guys. But I do have a combination of things um, in this diagram that's not just from UWorld. Um, so if you want to get all the questions right with hyperbilirubinemia, you should keep watching because this is super easy and super useful. Obviously, we want to become doctors and great doctors, so it's really important to see why the patient, your patient, has jaundice. So let's get to it. mean to be jaundice obviously jaundice means you have yellowing of the skin now that's not the first thing that presents as yellowing jaundice is first appeared in the sublingual region so at the uh, oral mucosa under the tongue and the next is the eyes scleral icterus and then eventually the whole skin is gonna appear jaundice I also have a vignette then for you so they'll tell you in the vignette that they have de um, they have darkening of the skin or they'll straight out say jaundice. Usually they give you the lab levels of the bilirubin, total bilirubin, direct bilirubin. The direct bilirubin, you subtract that from the total and that's your unconjugated or indirect bilirubin. Now you have to see which one is higher. So if the direct is most of what consists of the total, so for example, if it's six total and four is direct, then obviously you have more direct bilirubin level compared to indirect. So what do you do next? You think, okay, it's conjugated, that's mainly elevated of the bilirubin um, than the unconjugated. If it were to have been unconjugated that was elevated more than the conjugated, you want to think of hemolysis or you want to think of congenital liver problems where conjugation is an issue, for example, Gilbert syndrome. And there's also drugs that can also cause a uh, lack of um, conjugation to occur because the protein that carries it, the albumin usually carries it the most. If albumin can't carry the unconjugated in the bloodstream to the liver, then you're not going to have proper um, transport of the unconjugated to the liver to get conjugated. So again, hyperlipidemia, look at the levels of bilirubin, whether it's unconjugated or conjugated, that's high. If it's unconjugated, you want to think of hemolysis. If it's conjugated that's increased, so you have high levels of direct bilirubin, you think of a bunch of things. Next, you want to look at the liver transaminase enzymes. So look at the enzymes that are um, also going to be given to you in the vignette, such as ALT, AST, and alkaline phosphatase levels. Those three um, enzymes are really important because then it'll let you know whether it's in the liver that the problem is at or biliary tree. If you have normal ALT, normal AST, and normal alkaline phosphatase levels, and the patient is jaundice, and they have the increase in conjugated bilirubin level, you want to think of congenital issues, which include your uh, Dubin-Johnson syndrome and Rotor syndrome. If you have high ALT and ASD levels, whereas the alkaline phosphatase enzymes are elevated but not as much as the ALT and AST, you think liver is the issue because remember the liver forms the ALT and AST uh, enzymes and since the cells within the liver are getting lysed because there's um, damage to the liver, which is what's ca causing the jaundice, then those enzymes are going to be released. And that release of those enzymes increases those level um, of those enzymes within the bloodstream, right? So that's how um, we know that the liver is the issue because those enzymes that are related to the liver are going to be increased. 
So just a quick recap, we have hyperlipidemia at the top and then we think, okay, is the conjugated bilirubin level high or unconjugated? If it's unconjugated, you want to think more of hemolysis and you want to try to figure out why they're hemolyzing. They're most likely gonna be like major hints in the vignette indicating that they're hemolyzing or maybe there's a drug that they've just recently taken, um, or that they have Gilberts, which is going to be uh, someone that um, has a recent uh, exam and they've just all of a sudden became jaundiced, this never happens, They're, but they'll tell you that there was some anxiety or some uh, stress that caused the jaundice. So that was the onset um, of the jaundice, or right before they had the jaundice, they were stressing out about college stuff. That's usually a huge indicator. Again, you have unconjugated form that's going to be increased. Okay, conjugated bilirubin levels that are increased. Okay, and let me look at the ALT, AST, and alkaline phosphatase levels to see if it's the liver or the biliary tree. If you have alkaline phosphatase levels that are increased a lot more than the ALT and AST, then that indicates there's a problem with the biliary tree. So, Increase in alkaline phosphatase, think biliary tree is the source of the problem. Let's say we've established that this patient has ALT and AST levels, uh, enzyme levels that are really high compared to the alkaline phosphatase, which is mildly elevated. So now we think of everything that's a problem in the liver. And the number one thing you wanna think of is hepatitis. Hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. Uh, so there is alcoholic hepatitis, viral hepatitis, uh, there's a bunch of hepatitis, that you, like autoimmune hepatitis, um, drug-induced hepatitis, so uh, you can also have um, hemochromatosis, uh, Wilson's disease, those are going to have very distinct vignettes. I'm not going to go into details of that, but know that it's going to be most likely a hepatitis if it's a liver issue. With the alcohol, this is super easy. AST has to be double the amount of ALT in terms of its rise. So if you have increase in uh, AST 220 and ALT is 90, that is double in the rise. AST is double the amount of the ALT and that means it's alcohol that's the, uh, the source or it's, it's an alcoholic hepatitis. So we've talked about the hemolysis, we've talked about the uh, congenital, we've talked about the hepatocellular jaundice and now we're going to talk about obstructive jaundice. Now obstructive jaundice is going to have to do with the biliary tree. Now it's not going to be your gallbladder bladder stones or uh, cholithysis or uh, cholecystitis because I mean these can eventually lead to an obstructive jaundice because the stones can um, leave the gallbladder to cause cholecystitis and leave the cystic and go further down into the common bowel duct and now you've caused an obstructive jaundice and now you can have um, jaundice because well you're uh, obstructing the common bile duct which is where the bile goes through right the obstructive type there's gonna be two that you want to think of no not two three you want to think of three categories you have the stones and you have the cancer stones and cancer and then you also have the disease this is one I made disease slash pregnancy so um with the stones obviously your um gallstones that are causing the obstruction and this is going to have specific findings on the ultrasound so ultrasound is going to show thickened uh wall of the gallbladder and there's no dilation of the gallbladder because it didn't have enough time this is an acute onset it is an acute onset so that acute onset causes inflammation, thickening of the gallbladder wall, not dilated, it's not dilated. Then you have cancer that can uh, cause obstruction and cause the jaundice. Now with cancer, this is going to have thin gallbladder wall with dilated gallbladder. So this is because cancer is insidious, so it, it takes a long time. So there's no inflammation, there's no fever, um, this it just extends over time, and there's obviously um, cancer that's going on. So you can have three types of cancer. Cholangiocarcinoma, you can have ampulla of water cancer, and you can have adenocarcinoma of the head of the pancreas cancer. So these are the three types of cancers that you are going to think of when you think of obstructive jaundice. And then further, you're going to uh, differentiate by seeing if the patient has 
blood within the stools or uh, and anemia right away that's going to give you a huge hint that this patient has the ampulla vater um, cancer so it's basically a mass within the ampulla vater causing the obstruction uh, causing the jaundice and obviously uh, the malignancy is there so that's how you know so anemia plus jaundice plus blood in the stools ampulla vater that's where the um, mass is the tumor is adenocarcinoma of the head of the pancreas this is obviously causing obstruction remember the tail in the body don't really cause the um, obstruction leading to the jaundice because it's so far eventually over time it can because as it uh, grows in size it's, it can obstruct but with the head it's right there so that's why you uh, you have jaundice and it's gonna be they say it's painless jaundice now the only thing with that you can have back pain so constant back pain because remember with the pancreas whenever we think acute pancreatitis we think um, the pain is uh, radiating to the back so someone with um, adenocarcinoma of the pancreas they can have constant back pain um, that they might complain of and they'll complain of weight loss and then whenever you do a CT scan you're going to see that they have um, a, a mass so CT is the uh, the one that you want to choose in terms of imaging for that So I think I went over everything and then the other category was disease slash pregnancy um, so another obstructive jaundice can be um, primary sclerosing cholangitis and uh, primary biliary cirrhosis those can also cause um, obstructive jaundice and then pregnancy stasis, uh, cholestasis of pregnancy that can occur and cause jaundice as well Obviously, major thing with that is that they're pregnant and they'll let you know if you want to think of it's just cold stasis, so blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now I'm going to read a vignette, which we're going to go through that whole diagram to identify what the answer is. So, we have a patient that's 52 years of age with jaundice, anorexia, general um, malaise, right upper quadrant pain over four days. So, that indicates that it's acute onset. And they have a major depressive disorder since uh, 30 years now, uh, for 30 years now, and they actually com tried to commit suicide 15 years ago. Um, the patient is febrile, uh, so they have fever, and their blood pressure is 131 over 76. Uh, they have uh, jaundice in the eyes, uh, scleral icterus, uh, that's what it's called. On exam, um, they have tender hepatomegaly the labs so you have a complete blood count of uh, hemoglobin 12 mcv is 102 white blood cell is 13,000, and uh, platelet is 120,000. and the uh, serum chemistry with bun being 20 crean being 1.2 um, liver enzymes indicate ast 212 alt 99 um albumin level of 3.4, alkaline phosphatase level of 105, and total bilirubin level of 5.3. INR is 1.3. So the patient is jaundice, right? So right away we go up to the top. Okay, our patient has high, and remember total bilirubin is 5.3. That's a lot. Um, so that indicates that our patient is hyperlipidemia. I keep saying that hyperbilirubinemia so with hyperbilirubinemia we have established jaundice patient so next step is looking at uh, whether the um, the total bilirubin is conjugated or unconjugated so I didn't write that down but it was definitely conjugated that was higher so conjugated bilirubin level is a lot higher than the unconjugated so we eliminate hemolysis and, and congenital um, Gilbert syndrome or any drugs that may be causing it so we established that so now we are going to look at the alkaline phosphatase so this is what I'm looking at I wrote so next we look at the alkaline phosphatase levels um, and we look at ALT and AST levels. So we said that, I said that AST was 112, ALT was 99, so that tells you, um, okay, so ALT, AST, and alkaline phosphatase is 105. So AST is higher, so that indicates there's more elevation of the liver enzymes compared to the alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase is elevated, but uh, the liver enzymes are um, higher, or at least the one is. And now we go to all the causes of 
the liver, liver issues. So right away I think of hepatitis. This one, right away I jump to alcoholic hepatitis. Why? Because the AST is double the amount of the ALT. So right away I think alcoholic hepatitis. Let's feel really good about our answer. MCV is 102. Remember in alcoholics, their diet isn't so great, so their MCV level is gonna be um, high. So it's gonna be greater than 100, and this patient has 102. Platelets are also low. 120,000 normal is 152 is it 400 400,000 it's a little on the lower side so you do have thrombocytopenia so you think and this is seen in alcoholic hepatitis and the INR should be less than uh, 1.2 I believe and this patient has no 1.1 it should be less than 1.1 and this patient has 1.3 INR so that indicates towards a liver issue as well and uh, here we have alcoholic hepatitis so we kind of climbed through that um, that diagram. So I really hope that was helpful. When you think of that diagram and try to do step by step, you will definitely get the question right. I really hope that was helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and do share this video as that will be super helpful. And go ahead and um, follow me on my Instagram, Mercy Medical. I do have Snapchat and uh, Twitter. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.